Calculating or inclined reinforcement in concrete is one thing, but there are some details that we have to consider when placing it, since its bond to the concrete is not perfect. This is achieved by adding length or bends to the rebar. The extra length we add to the reinforcement to connect it to the concrete is called its anchorage length. As engineers, we would like to know this value because it allows us to optimize the cost and safety of a building. Too much anchorage length and we're wasting materials. Too little and the beam will not have the strength we thought it would while we were designing it. The idea behind this is as follows. We need to ensure there is enough resistance at the bar to concrete interface such that we can stress the rebar to yield before it pulls out of the concrete. Practically speaking, put bar deep, bar break before pull out. There are three ways to get this resistance. Chemical adhesion, mechanical adhesion, and mechanical resistance. While this may sound simple at first, there are some common mistakes engineers fall into. First of all, many think that more length is equal to more strength. This is true up to a point, but after that point, the strength is determined by the steel reinforcement area, not the development length. So let's say these three bars yield at 200 newtons. The first one will pull out, the second one is optimal, and the third one is just a waste of material, because it will still break at 200 newtons. A second misconception is that development length is not necessary for compression reinforcement. As we will see later on, this is very necessary since both ACI and the Eurocode provide methods for calculating this. Lastly, many forget that this applies to stirrups too, so make sure they have the little hook at their ends. So how does one calculate this anchorage length? Well, anchorage length is a function of the yield force of the bar. Sometimes this is hidden as the bar diameter because we assume it will take its full capacity. It is a function of the strength of the concrete, its cover, the center to center spacing of the rebar, and the type of ties and stirrups used. The last three factors might seem unimportant, but they're there because, apart from the bar pulling out, splitting of the concrete can also occur due to the outward forces of the rebar's ribs. Cover, spacing, and stirrups prevent this from happening. Let's see what the code says, starting with ACI. Look for embedment or development length in section 12. Here I'm showing the simplified method for bars in tension. For bars in compression, the formula is simply this one. The minimum development length, LB, is 12 inches. The psi values are factors which affect the bond, such as bar location and epoxy coatings. Here's a summary of their values. For completeness sake, FY is the yield strength of the rebar in PSI, FC is the cylinder strength in PSI, DB the bar diameter in inches, and lambda is some factor for lightweight concrete. Usually it's 1. The last clause about reductions only apply to non-earthquake design. At risk of stating the obvious, if we use smaller diameter bars, the development length is also smaller. In some cases, however, no matter how small the bars we use, there is not enough room to develop the flexural reinforcement's yield strength. To deal with this, we use hooks and bends, table 25.3.1 and clause 25.4.3.1 summarizes their use nicely. To use our freshly calculated LD, we need to talk about theoretical cutoff points, which are the topic for another video. These are the places in the beam where reinforcement is no longer needed, because the moment has reduced. Actual cutoff points follow some rules depending on how many bars you cut off, etc., but for the subject at hand, it just boils down to add the embedment length to the theoretical cutoff point. If Eurocode is your thing, look for anchorage length in section 8.4 of Eurocode 2. According to this, we find the basic anchorage length by using this formula, where this. Then we find the design anchorage length by doing this, this, this given this. But for the lazy people, we'll just use this table and multiply things by 0.7 if the bond conditions are poor, as explained here. The same formulas are used for hooks with different values for alpha. In reality though, we use this table for all cases and divide by 0.7 for poor bond conditions. Wow, that is easy. EC2 says the bar should extend LBD plus A1 beyond the point where it's needed. Usually A1 simplifies to 1.125D and this is to take the shear stress into consideration. And that's it. 
If you sticked all the way to the end, thank you. And as a token of my appreciation, here's a little hint for speedy estimates. LD is equal to bar diameter times 40. Don't take it to the bank, but it's close enough. Well, that's all for now. Hope you learned something new, and I'll catch you all next time. See ya!